The Ripple settlement speculation is about to explode. In fact, I think it already has exploded. Now, if you've been watching XRP videos for a while now, you know who Jeremy Hogan is. He's an attorney that's been following this SEC versus Ripple case extremely closely. He said something to say on Twitter recently that have made a lot of people think that this case could be coming to an end. And there's another influential Twitter user that's very heavily involved in the XRP community that thinks the same thing. In fact, he's got a date to which he thinks settlement will actually happen. And in this video, we're gonna talk about why Jeremy Hogan thinks the SEC's case is literally falling apart and they're just grasping at straws before this settlement offer actually happens. Also, Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, was on CNBC this morning talking with someone and it honestly was kind of a painful to watch. Um, Brad Garlinghouse tried to essentially educate somebody because that CNBC host was pointing to an article that, that said all crypto should be banned because all it's used for is manipulation and a crime. So it was interesting to see Brad go and explain in very simple terms uh, how XRP is actually different in its utilization and why it has the upper hand in its case versus the SEC. And right now XRP is at about $1. It's been climbing back up since the huge crash last week. And I saw a video today that kind of confirmed my suspicions and that a lot of this price manipulation has been happening behind the scenes from a few whales, from a few institutions, and even potentially from some blockchain marketing companies. I'm gonna briefly talk about a whistleblower who's been talking about what happens behind the scenes and how those and how these markets are actually manipulated with the ultimate goal of lowering the price of Bitcoin and thus the rest of the market so that whales can buy as many as they possibly can. Or if hedge funds want to get involved at a cheapest price as possible, how they could actually go about it and how shady it really all is. But that's not just to say it happens in the crypto community. This has been at play in the stock market for decades. Hey everyone, my name is Randy. Welcome back to the Late Night Grind. And on this channel, I'm covering the SEC versus Ripple case, as well as other cryptocurrency news, investment markets, personal finance, and stimulus check updates. So if any of those topics interest you, go ahead, click the subscribe button. Don't forget to tap the bell notification icon so that YouTube will send you a notification when I drop a new video. And I do so when there are new developments. And in this space, there is always a ton of new developments. So if you're feeling generous, I'd greatly appreciate it. If you go ahead, click the thumbs up button. It really helps out with a YouTube channel like this. Basically just tells YouTube uh, to share this video with other new audiences. So if you do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, well, let's jump into it. So earlier this morning, Crypto Banter, who is another big YouTube channel that covers the crypto space, had a guest on who basically came, came in as a whistleblower, uh, didn't show his face, but basically explained that he worked for a blockchain marketing company. And before that, previously, he was a big wig in a corporate nine to five. On Twitter, he is known as two comma popper. You can actually go and read some of his, uh, the way he laid out how this price manipulation is actually going down in the Bitcoin, in the crypto community as a whole. And honestly, I, that's something that I kind of figured because I've known this has been happening in the stock market for years. Basically, marketing companies use their resources to manipulate the markets. Basically, what they do is they'll spend tens of thousands of dollars seeding different uh, media outlets. And we're talking, and we're talking CNBC, we're talking Forbes, we're talking a lot of the different media outlets with certain articles that might be bearish or something that po might pull the price of Bitcoin down. Well, they'll see these articles, they'll then go out, they'll then contact all of the writers and all of the influencers that they know and say, listen, you got to jump on this story. You need to go and publish this too. Some of them they'll also pay as well. Once that happens, the fear, the bearishness starts hitting the market. And once the retail community starts seeing that fear set in, a lot of them will go ahead and sell, especially the ones that have bought recently in the last couple of months. And after that, they'll use the resources to dump any Bitcoin on any on any bull market that might be going on or just to crash the price inevitably. In the back end, they know that this is going to hit, hit the heavily leveraged uh, traders, which is what happened last week. Over 775,000 uh, heavily leveraged traders got whacked all at once uh, due to manipulation of the price. That's kind of the final thing that happens to, to pull that price all the way down to a price where others want to get in. Now, this user saying that they do this for institutional buyers, even hedge funds, or even somebody that wants to put together a trust and offer it to the public. Sounds pretty shady, but this has actually been going on in the stock market for decades. That people buy time, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars buying a time on channels like CNBC and other major media outlets in order to get their message out there in order to drop a price or pump a price, whatever they want, and they use that as, as their form of manipulation. So if you've been scared of what the Bitcoin market's actually doing, what's been happening the past few weeks, in my opinion, isn't exactly just part of the cycle. 
but it's actually some of the manipulation. So just keep that in mind when the price of XRP is going up or down. It may or may not be exactly related to XRP or even the SEC case. Speaking of the SEC case, Brad Garlinghouse was on CNBC this morning. He was doing an interview and it was kind of interesting trying to see him explain what the difference is between XRP and Bitcoin and Ethereum to this user who basically pointed to an article that said all Bitcoin or all, all the cryptos should be banned because all they're used for is crime. And he was using the Colonial Pipeline shutdown case as the example because the hackers requested Bitcoin as their ransom payment and you get the idea. So Brad Garlinghouse went on to say a couple of things that really starts to fit in with the narrative. Like I've been saying for the past two weeks in my videos, XRP is trying to position itself in that narrative but it's also being backed up by government agencies and influencers to follow that narrative, which is what? Well, XRP is a non-inflationary token, which means there aren't any more tokens that are going to be created. All that were created were created. In fact, it's actually deflationary because technically some XRP is burned after every transaction. Now, because XRP cannot be mined, as, he, as Brad Garlinghouse pointed out, it is carbon neutral. Also fits right in with that narrative. He knows it. He knows his audience on CNBC is not are not necessarily the crypto traders and are not necessarily all the speculation, but it's those that are looking at Ripple as the company, those looking at XRP and his opportunity to slip in there that it's carbon neutral. Yeah, that's his uh, that's his way of doing marketing for XRP. Now, the other thing he explained was that Ripple does not control XRP. It's already out there. It's uh, it's already out there in the public. It's tradable. Yes, Ripple owns some of the XRP and has it listed on its own treasury docs. But then he went on to explain that XRP is not a security because if you own XRP, you still don't own a piece of Ripple. You don't get to vote on the management of the company. You don't get to do a lot of the things that you can do in the, in the public stock market when you buy, say, Apple stock. When you buy XRP, you your price, the price of XRP doesn't go up or down based on the profitability of Ripple, which is part of the reason the SEC's case is falling apart. <clears throat> so going back to what Jeremy Hogan is pointing out, that the SEC just yesterday sent two more motions to Judge Netburn seeking more documents from Ripple. They're also requesting several more depositions. Now, Jeremy pointed out that is it's in all likelihood, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson were already deposed. I mean, they already went through depositions. The SEC already got the information that those two, that they're going to get out of them. So what Jeremy's saying is that they didn't get the information they wanted, or at least not enough of it, so they're going to go to quote unquote weaker prey. That's really interesting because what he said is basically that their case just doesn't have enough to win this case against Ripple, therefore they're continuing to look for more information. That's why they're continuing to ask for documentation from 2012. They're asking for all, they're asking for three more depositions of people that worked for Ripple during that time. They're also asking for all transactions of XRP since 2012. That's ridiculous. So Jeremy's take on it was that the SEC is now grasping at straws because they simply don't have enough evidence to actually win the case in court. So what it's saying is that Ripple's fair notice defense is actually holding up stronger than what people thought. Not having the time frame or not having any clarity from the SEC for the last eight years, and then finally the SEC dropping a lawsuit on this on them is actually a good defense. Now here's the reason that the settlement speculation is starting to ramp up. Because if that's the case, and the SEC is seeing that Ripple's fair notice defense is stronger, that they actually don't have the evidence that they need, which is why they're continuing to seek more information, that if Ripple actually goes for a summary judgment in August, which according to my last video, that's what that's supposedly what Ripple's attorneys told the SEC attorneys, that if a summary judgment would be awarded because of the fair notice defense in August, that means Ripple would escape the SEC unscathed, but it would also mean that the SEC could no longer sue any crypto company for the same reason that they're trying to go after XRP. The SEC doesn't want that, that because that's a whole market that they could potentially go after. Now, the speculation is that they don't want to lose that leverage. They don't want other crypto companies to be able to come in and say, nope, fair notice defense and, ha and win because of the case, because of the precedent that Ripple would be setting by winning a case using that defense. So according to Stephen Huber on Twitter, who is a large active community member in the XRP community, is stating that May 31st is his prediction for a settlement date. In other words, the SEC looking for more information, they're probably not gonna get it because if they lose in a summary judgment in August, they would lose their leverage to go after any other crypto company almost whatsoever. 
that they're gonna settle. So that's what we're looking at right now. As of right now, XRP is $1 and still climbing, but let me know in the comments section below, what are your price targets if Ripple were to actually get through this with a settlement? Also, if you have not been there recently, go to the community tab on my channel. I have polls that I put up there. You can see what other late night grind community members are thinking. My latest poll asked, when you bought Bitcoin and by Bitcoin, I meant when you bought into crypto, what was your exit strategy? Were you actually just trying to uh, make some money so when the market went up, you were gonna sell? Or did you have a plan to sell um, at the end of this bull run, whenever that may be, uh, in five years, 10 years? Or were you planning on never selling, just investing your money into the crypto space over the next 20 and 30 years? Because your philosophy is that 30 years from now, fiat won't exist, it'll all be cryptocurrencies, and all the money that you're putting into now is simply changing the value of what you have now to the value of what you'll have in the future. Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, and I'll see you guys on the next video.